Hello and welcome to Spencer's Library. I'm Claudia and a few weeks ago I published a video with the title Is Buying New Releases a Luxury? This video mainly came out of my frustration of not having enough spending money to buy new releases in the amounts that I see on Booktube. I spoke about my feelings of isolation and of missing out and Despite me rationalizing secondhand book buying as the correct financial choice about how I just wish I had enough cash to buy as many new releases fresh off the presses as I would like. That video got a huge response. Turns out I'm not the only one who feels that way. Despite the glamour and the aesthetic we see here on Booktube, most people like me have a budget and therefore prefer to get their books secondhand. Reading all of your comments on that video was pretty amazing and I decided to do a follow-up with a little bit more research and a little bit less moaning on my part. So here it is. All of my references will be linked in the description box, so check them out if you want a bit more detail on the topics that I'm going to discuss. And before we get into this, in this video I will only discuss buying books and will not touch upon borrowing. I know that many of you are going to tell me that borrowing is a wonderful alternative to buying books, and it is, and I love my local library, but this video is specifically about owning books. I started off by posting a survey on my Twitter account with a very simple question. Are the books you buy mostly used, mostly new, a mix of both new used and new, or I mostly borrow instead. And these were the results. The numbers really surprised me. I know that 58 participants does not make a representative sample size, but I still would have thought that 55 of participants regularly buy used books. I personally would have put that number at 20 or 30 at most. However, 38% of respondents buy mostly new books, which is also a sizable amount. In recent weeks, there has been some discussion, especially on Twitter, about the ethics of secondhand books. The latest wave of outrage that I'm aware of um, was when an author compared buying books from charity shops to pirating and buying advanced reader copies, both of which are very obviously and very directly unethical. The outrage was big and I felt it too. This person was directly criticizing people like me who buy 90 to 95% of our books second hand. But when I stop to think about it, I can see the frustration on the author's part too. For every book from a living author that I buy in a charity shop rather than a bookshop, they lose out on money. And authors are not well paid. According to a study of British authors published by the Authors Licensing and Collecting Society in June of 2018, the annual median income of a professional author from published books is £10,437, which translates to an hourly wage of just £5.73. That's less than I make in my crappy minimum wage job. The study also found an alarming gender pay gap, which means that female authors on average earn about 75% of the income of male authors. However, the same study reported that the creative industry as a whole is growing at twice the rate of the UK economy and is now valued at £92 billion. So the book industry is growing rather than slowing down, and yet authors' wages have been consistently falling since 2005. What that says to me is that the money is not going to the people who create the literature that is consumed, which to me sounds like a problem with the book industry. Now, I come to this as a complete outsider and have never worked in the publishing industry, but if a £92 billion industry cannot afford to pay creators minimum wage, then where is that money going? We all know that authors get very little money from each traditionally published book. So is it really right for me to deny them that pound or two and instead go to Oxfam and buy the book secondhand? Well, authors' earnings are not the only ethical question to be considered. Let's look at charity shops, for example. Charity shops are a British institution that became popular during the Second World War, and the concept is pretty simple. People donate used items such as books, clothes and furniture to these shops, and they then sell them to the public, with all the profits going to different charities. This, to me, sounds like a great system, and charity shops are by far 
my favourite place to buy books. But even they have some opponents, mainly owners of independent second-hand bookshops. In a Guardian article from 2009, in the middle of the financial crisis, the owner of a second-hand bookshop complained that he had to close his shop because the ox farm across the road was stealing all his business. This is what he said. I held on until now, but I just couldn't keep going. Oxfam is the Tesco of the second-hand book world. It is destroying the industry. Half our business is rare old editions, but in a recession people aren't buying so many. So we pay our bills from the sale of £2 paper bags or hardbacks for under £5, and Oxfam has destroyed that. Personally, I find it difficult to sympathise with this man. By his own admission, half of his business model is based on his shop undercutting the prices of new books from traditional bookshops. So I don't know why he thinks that charity shops undercutting his prices is any different. If you want to benefit from free market capitalism, well, there are consequences to that. I would personally rather give £2 for a book to a charity rather than a for-profit shop, especially since I'm buying this book second-hand anyway, so the author does not profit from my purchase in either case. But let's just go back to the whole author issue for a moment. The Society of Authors have a whole page on their website that is dedicated to that issue, on which they go through different ways of buying a book and their take on it from an author's perspective. Very interesting article and I urge you to read it. It starts off with this quote from author Philip Pullman. It is easy to think that readers gain a great deal by being able to buy books cheaply, but if a price is unrealistically cheap, it can damage the author's reputation or brand as we say now, and leads to the impression that books are a cheap commodity and reading is an experience that's not worth very much. And this is where I just cannot agree with him. To argue that books have to be expensive because otherwise they become a cheap commodity and that reading will not be worth much as an experience that is incredibly elitist thinking. I paid £20 for his book when he gave a reading at my university. Does he think that I can afford to pay that for every book I read? Or does my inability to pay hundreds of pounds a month on books mean that I am by his definition not allowed in this exclusive club of readers? I would have understood him arguing against secondhand books from the perspective of an author who doesn't get paid enough for his work. But to say that books have to be expensive in order to be valuable is classist, elitist bullshit. And it makes me very angry to think that he wants to keep reading as such an expensive hobby, thereby excluding huge amounts of the population who can't afford to pay £20 for a book. But let's get back to the rest of this Society of Authors article. They discuss all the different book buying options and champion independent bookshops that sell new books as the best deal for both authors and communities, which is true. They also criticise chain bookstores on Amazon for the low amounts paid to authors from those sources and in the case of Amazon for a lot of other dodgy business practices. This is what the article has to say about charity and second-hand bookshops. I'll wait till the cat is gone. Secondhand books have an environmental advantage and it's great to see books shared and loved, but authors receive no royalty or other payment from sales of secondhand books. Charity bookshops have an economic advantage over high street booksellers because they stock for free, are staffed by volunteers and are exempt from business rates. Yeah, it's pretty hard to argue against that because they have a very good point. Charity shops have got an economic advantage over for-profit bookshops. And yes, authors don't get any money from the books sold there. They also touch on the environmental questions around books. Now, I'm no expert when it comes to the environment and climate change, but it's easy to see that reusing a book rather than it going to be recycled or to landfill is environmentally more responsible than creating more and more new books and bringing those onto the market. The website ethicalconsumer.org recommends charity shops over new bookshops and online shops like Amazon and Book Depository. In its ranking, it scored bookshops on sustainability, environmental impact, company ethos and impact on people and animals. 
generally speaking, we don't need any more stuff in the world for the most part. There are more books sitting unsold in bookstores than I could ever read in a lifetime. And I know that I'm never going to run out of books. Of course, that doesn't mean we should stop writing books, since with new books and new authors, we get new ideas and new thinking, and that's important to keep our society moving forwards. But overall, we could do with thinking of books as things a bit more. Books are made from materials that come from the environment and have an impact on it. Books that already exist have to go somewhere once they're not wanted anymore. Books sit in collections, in our homes and take up space. Books get thrown in the recycling bin, if they're lucky, or in the general waste to be processed. Books are not ethereal entities, but objects. And like all objects, they have an impact on the world we live in. I think a good example for that is classics. I can find an edition of Jane Austen's Emma in every single charity shop in my town. So do I really need to buy the newly released special edition with a fancy new cover design to add to my collection of other fancy new editions of Austen novels? Obviously, I don't. And I think with all the other ethical questions around buying secondhand books, that buying classics from charity shops is a no-brainer. So if you are a classics reader like I am, uh, but generally buy your books new, maybe try popping into your local Oxfam to see if they have the final piece of your Dickens collection. It will save you money, and Dickens is not losing out on any of it. Yes, living authors need to be paid more for their work, but is this really an argument against buying secondhand books? There needs to be measures put in place to ensure that authors get more money for the new books that they sell. And that has to come from the government and the publishing industry itself. The solution could be fixed book price laws like Germany has, which do make books more expensive to buy, but they also ensure that the author profits from the sales more. Or it could be done by setting a fixed amount of money that a publishing house has to pay an author for each sale, no matter what the price of the book. That would probably still keep prices low because Amazon and WH Smith are still going to be competing for the lowest prices and undercutting each other. Either way, it seems to me that the problem lies within the publishing industry and not with the consumers and the secondhand book industry. As for you and me as consumers, we have to weigh up the options and make our own decisions. I think in an ideal world in which I had unlimited resources and access, I would buy books from living authors in independent bookshops and I would buy classics and books from dead authors in charity shops. Unfortunately, reality will not let me do that. For one, I don't have a local independent bookshop in my town. And also, as I've mentioned before, I run on very limited funds and buying books new would mean that I would have to severely limit the amount of books that I buy. And that is a sacrifice that I'm not willing to make. I am hopeful though that my financial situation long term will improve and I'm certain that that will lead to me becoming a more ethical consumer when it comes to books. Now I want to hear your take on things. Where do you buy your books and why? Have you thought about the impact of your book buying choices, both negative and positive? Are you in a bit of a moral dilemma like I am? And if you're an author, what is your take on this situation? Who is to blame for the fact that you're not getting paid as much as you should be? I'm very much looking forward to keeping this discussion going in the comments. And I'm, yeah, just really interested in your responses to this. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.